everybody, this is Tim W. Leather Tachi 1996, and for our fourth episode of Godzilla Effects this week, we have Godzilla vs. The Thing. Well, actually, the real title for this movie is called Mothra vs. Godzilla, but what you're looking at is the uh, American poster. I tried to find the Japanese poster for this movie, but every time I tried to get a Japanese poster, they were all small. Because I pulled this poster off of um, off of Google Images, so yeah, every Japanese poster that I tried to get, <coughs> excuse me, every Japanese poster I was trying to get was they were tiny, they were all small, and they weren't as big as this one. Now, like I said with King Kong vs Godzilla, like I love showing off the just showing off the poster, and I love how, excuse me, I love how Godzilla the way they. The way this poster um, depicts him, he looks something like that. Don't even look like Godzilla. Not even, that doesn't even look like Godzilla. Not even close. That looks more like something out of um, like the Lost World from 1925, or or the Beast from 20,000 Fathoms, or something, or one of those old dinosaur movies from the. And this is for the year 1964. Sorry, I should have said that when I said the name. Uh, this movie came out in the year 1964 here. Uh, Mothra vs. Godzilla. So, anyways. Yeah, it's just so weird. Like, the, the way Godzilla's depicted on this poster. He looks like something out of the uh, American monster and dinosaur movies from the 19, from the 1950s. So, I mean, I, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with his design on this poster. It's just like he looks... He just looks so... That that doesn't even look like him. <laughs> that doesn't even look like him. So, yeah. I will start off this um, special effects review by saying this movie was really good. This was a really good Godzilla movie. It does have con it does have cons, you know, like the other three, like the other three did. But it's, they're very... It's like not... It's not as many as I thought, but <laughs> it's not as many as... There's, there's some. Uh, it's a small handful. And one thing I want to do say is that the cover has says that this is widely considered the best of all Godzilla sequels. Um, yeah, I can name about seven. I can name about seven Godzilla movies that are a lot better than this one. And you probably heard it on my review for the movie before this. So, yeah, I, why is this considered the best one again? I, I really don't understand that. So, alright, here we get in, here we get into, here we get into it. Um, starting off, we have a shot of Godzilla and Mothra. This is during the first monster battle in the movie. When, it was after, like, um, Mothra shows up after the citizen, after the three main human characters ask Mothra to go help him out and fight Godzilla. Now, this brings me to my very first con. Here, I have it. I have it written down, actually. Um, here, okay, my first con with my first special effects con with this movie is that even th that Mothra moves a bit too fast during the first monster battle, and it looks very reminiscent of Godzilla Raids again. Now, remember when I said in the semi in episode two when I said Godzilla raids against like the monster battle when they were in Osaka they don't they did not slow the camera down and it looked they just looked a little too uh it looked a little too fast and was very do it on one take ish um yeah Mothra okay I understand she's a puppet yeah she's a definite puppet and once again, um, Haruo Nakajima plays in the Godzilla suit. I always got to say that awesome name because, you know, he played an icon. He played as um, the world's biggest icon. Anyways, when you see Mothra move, like, she'll flap her wings during and move her head around during the first monster fight here. And she moves too quickly. It's like they either sped up, it's like they either sped up the footage or the puppet's wings were able to move that fast. It just looks weird. It looks so odd and then when Mothra's head moves when she gets when Godzilla injures one of her wings, she looks like a bobblehead. 
She looks like a hairy bot. She looks like a little hairy bobblehead. Yeah, um, there's some times where, you know, they slowed the camera, they slowed the camera speed down, the monster footage, or they slowed it down, and it looks like the monsters have great mass to them, but with Mothra, it's like, I don't know, it's just, with Godzilla, they did that perfectly throughout this entire movie, they slowed the footage down so he looks like he has great mass, but Mothra is like a 50-50 with her, like, half the time they do that, and then other half the time... She j then the other half of the time, she just moves so fast, and it looks very Raids Again-ish, so it's like, uh, you could have done so much better with that. And, uh, I don't know what every monster's obsession is with grabbing Godzilla's tail and dragging him all over the place, because in the last, re in the movie before this, King Kong did that, and now Mothra's doing it, it's like, okay, what is everyone's obsession with that? Okay. Here's another better, here's a uh, much more better shot of uh, Mothra here. And I love how, and this is so funny about this kind of, this is so funny about this shot here. This shot is on, actually on a lot of the movie posters for this film. And it's so funny how it, Mothra ends up becoming, like, stealing the show from Godzilla. Like, I know this movie's called Mothra vs. Godzilla, but Godzilla's like the main one of the two main stars of the film so it's like he he looks so like a minor character because if you notice in this shot here it's only his head and his hand showing and there's like mothra taking up the the big emphasis of the shot here but other than just like that con that first effects con that i mentioned like the monster battle is actually a really it's actually other than mothra moving too fast in some shots it's like, the monster battle is actually really fun to watch, like the large miniature set that they fight on, which it looks like a, it's not a desert, but it's like out in the countryside or something like that. I, I don't know, they, I, I don't know if there are any places in Japan that look like this, that look very deserty here, but I do like Mothra's, um, her design is like, there's nothing really special, it's a, uh, just a giant butterfly but just a giant moth or butterfly type creature but i do love the her wing color it has a very unique uh, unique um color scheme and design to it because the thing with uh, butterflies and moths is the thing that always attracts people to these uh to these uh, kind of adorable animals if you look at moth or she's cute look at that she looks kind of cuddly actually <laughs> actually looks kind of cuddly sorry about that folks but anyway when the thing that attracts people to butterflies and moths sometimes is their wing color. And you look at Mothra's wings, she has a very unique uh, wing design, her color scheme and her wings, which is really cool. And the pup, the Mothra puppet itself is really well designed. I mean, they really wanted to make this thing look as insecty, like insectoid as possible. And her eyes are just like the many lenses, like the different little... Like squares or whatever you want to call it. I, I've heard they were called lenses and you can tell that they put like a glass or some solid plastic over the over the eye because when you notice it has a very shiny look to it. So but other than that it oh poor Godzilla and Mothra beats the crap out of Godzilla actually hard to believe like she always knocks him over and everything it's kind of this monster is actually pretty tough despite and despite being a bug. Despite being a giant insect, it's like, she actually knocks Godzilla over several times. And here we have another, here we have another shot of uh, Mothra here. Now this, here you can see a better detail of the pup, of the puppet here. And this puppet, it, like I said, it's really, it's really well designed. I mean, you can see, I don't know if that's hair or fur on her. And one thing I do want to mention is that you don't see the wires holding her up. Like, that's the one special effects pro. Well, the other special effects pro is like the monster battle, because that thing is just watching Godzilla and Mothra just start fighting each other. It's really crazy. It's like after you see Godzilla raids again in King Kong vs. Godzilla, it's like, oh, it's like, okay, now Godzilla is just like, does fighting every creature, every new monster he comes across. But one other piece of special effects that I gotta give pro that I gotta give it a pro is the fact that when Mothra flies, you don't see any wires. 
And the reason why I'm saying this is because, remember back in episode one when I mentioned you can see the wire holding his tail? Now, I mentioned this to my buddies, uh, I mentioned that, uh, just a, as a little side note here about the first movie, um, when you, and when you go on the movie reviews library, uh, me, my buddies Alan and Megas Dragon, we actually did our review for the very first Godzilla film. And I even pointed out that you can see the wire holding the tail. And Megas Dragon looked and he said, oh, I didn't catch that. Like, dude, it's right there. You can clearly see the wire holding his tail. Anyways, I didn't mean to rant. But you will see that we did our... And actually, I did a review on plot set. Everything that I don't do in this series, I did in that video. But anyways, let's get back to this. Sorry, I'm getting sidetracked. Now, I gotta give it a, a pro for the special effects that you don't see the wires holding up the Mothra puppet, which, hey, that's, hey, that's a good thing. You're not supposed to see that anyways. So, there's not really much I can say about this shot in particular. It's like, yeah, it's like the Mothra puppet has really good, really good detail. They really, I guess they probably studied the anatomy of moth uh, moths or butterflies to try to really make this creature look like to have the name fit the fit the design and, and again grabbing Godzilla's tail like he does like she only does it that one time like and I'm sorry that these pictures are gonna be very out of sequence again like with raids again because when I was searching for through uh, Google images these were the best ones I can find so I'm very sorry if these pictures are presented out of sequence here. So, yeah. Uh, I, I'm sorry. I, I don't have much really to say about this shot here. About this shot in particular. Just wait until the next shot um, the next shot pops up. Um, so, how's everyone doing today? You guys doing good oh, okay here's here's a good oh, here's a good special effects pro here's a good one right here um actually it brings me to another it actually brings me to actually before well this actually brings me to my two other cons with this film i in one godzilla in this movie as you can tell by this shot he, he makes his most unusual appearance in a godzilla movie ever he comes out of the ground instead of the water this time so I mean it's an un it's a it, I really like that because it's different it's a different we're four movies into this franchise and it's very different that instead of coming out of the ocean he comes out of the ground so it's like oh okay that's that's actually that's cool I gotta give it that's pretty that's different I like that but this brings me but when Godzilla shows up in the film here there's two other special effects cons that I really that I really got to mention. My next con I got to say is when the tanks roll in, when the military tanks roll in and they start shooting at Godzilla. Um, I compare the tank scenes in this movie to King Kong vs. Godzilla, where the tanks the tank shots are like a 50/50. Like when the tanks are shown close up. Um they you know look like actual tanks and then but the wide the wider shots they look too much like little remote control tanks like in King Kong vs Godzilla I don't know that's just me that's just what they that's just what they look like it just it just looks a bit odd really and then my second con my second con with Godzilla here when he shows up in the film as much as I love this design I really do it it's a it's still the dinosaur, the very dinosaurian look with the uh, great mass, you know, with the right camera speed. There's just some shots where the top of his mouth, um, his top jaw, like, shakes like a horse kind of, like, does this weird horse shake, like it shakes back and forth when he roars. I don't know, it just looks really, it just looks super weird when his mouth shit when the top of his mouth the top jaw shakes back and forth it I don't know uh, excuse me I don't know if it's like it might be easy to ignore or something but you can see it and it's like okay um I don't think his mouth was meant to I don't think his mouth was meant to do that but okay I don't know it just looks so it just looked a little weird 
But other than that, Godzilla, the, with Godzilla, I can't really, oh, here we, oh, this, this bit here. Uh, here we have the Mothra larvae, and I was gonna th uh, write down that when the Mothra larvae move on, when they move on land, they look too much like they're on a track, but upon closer inspection, they really don't, they move, um, semi-realistically, you know, like worm, like a worms do, like a worm does, sort of, with their bodies undulating up and down when they move. And the Mothra larva puppets, they are actually, you know what, they are actually really well done. They really are, seriously. They have the very indented, uh, wormy skin, and they're just really well done, actually. This was right before this larvae in particular. There's two of them in the movie. Um, that hatch out of the big yellow, blue, and white speckled mothra egg. Um, and even that thing is just... The shot... I gotta actually talk about that. The effect shots with those, they are actually really well done with, with the mothra egg. There's like a large prop that they made, and then there's uh, sh green screen shots of like the egg in full view. Those are actually really... those effect shots are actually really well done. Now, it's just so funny, it's just so crazy that there's two Mothra larvae that come out of the egg, and when they come out, they're all wet and disgusting. I got, like, Mothra larvae, they actually really got the, they actually really got the point across. And actually, in this particular scene here, this is actually the, this is the last monster battle in the movie where Godzilla fights the Mothra larvae. This actually brings me to uh, my fourth uh, special effects con. When Godzilla melts, when he destroys the rocks in the miniature set around around them, when Godzilla shoots his atomic breath at the rocks, they melt. When they melt, they look too much like plastic. I mean, I know this is 1964, but come on. But, come on. It's like, when he melt. Well, I can't say come on. I take that back. I'm sorry. But, it's like... I mean, I get it. This was 1964. When Godzilla melts some of the rocks, they look like plastic when they melt, or rubber or something, and then when he pushes the rocks around, they use the same sound effect they have for destroying buildings, and they repeat that sound over and over again, so it's like using the same sound for, some, for something different is just kind of, I don't know, that's just kind of different, like, yeah, they use a lot more realistic, like, rocks crumbling sounds, but then when Godzilla hits hits the boulders, they use the building crushing sound effect, with, like I said, and they do it, they do it multiple times, so it's like, okay, that's kind of interesting, and I'm telling you now, like, the Mothra larva biting Godzilla's tail is an absolutely hilarious shot, it really is, because you see Godzilla just waving his tail all over the place, trying to shake the larva off, and it's like, oh, it got, you can tell, like, with Godzilla, it's like, oh, that hurt. And here we go to another shot of both the monsters. Like, that's the image of Moth. That's the angle of Mothra that everybody knows and loves right here. And as you can see in the shot, Godzilla has a, a net on him. Now, there's actually one of the highlight, one of the special effects highlights in this movie is you see the electrical, the electrical towers that there's one in the background and then there's one, like, right under Mothra there. There's this one thing that they try to... They, once again, third movie now, they try to electrocute Godzilla, but instead, they do something a lot different with that, um, with that plan. Instead of building a electrical fence around a city, what they do is, they actually, they say in the movie that there's one of the army, the army general, well, the Japanese army general, because there's Americans in the movie too, which is awesome, and... They have a thing where they were saying artificial lightning, where they have these big electric conductors on top of these towers, and when Godzilla trips this fuse on the ground, all this uh, artificial lightning starts shooting at him, and it's like, it's like you can tell they did the, um, like, scratch the film, and you put in the sound effect for it, but I really enjoyed that scene, the artificial lightning scene, because it's like, oh, they're trying to electrocute him again. And then they drop all these metal nets on him and uh, try to electrocute him that way. And the metals, the and yes, the nets in this movie were metal. So they tried to use metal nets and artificial lightning to electrocute Godzilla again. 
But I guess I I gotta fact check this, but I guess reptiles uh, don't like electricity. I guess because they said that in King Kong vs Godzilla, uh, and they did it. This is the third movie now. They try to electrocute him. So it's like, do rep? Is it true reptiles don't li- they don't like electricity or something? But the artificial lightning scene it was really cool. Like I really en- I really enjoyed that scene. That was that's a big time high uh, special effects highlight in this movie is the artificial lightning bit, and especially the fact that they use multiple one they use multiple towers to do to try to electrocute them, but then it's like they end up overloading the electrical circuits and you see the uh, air, the towers start blowing up and everything, and then Godzilla melts them with his atomic breath, so <laughs> I don't know it's just this movie had. With with the exception of, like, the pros that I've listed here, it's like, this movie was just, overall, it was really good. Like, the Toho is getting a lot better. Oh, and here we go with the, with the, uh, when I mentioned earlier that the, that there's two moth or larvae that come out of the egg, and, you know, they look all wet and disgusting. And then, and then this shot, Mothra's dead at this point. Mothra's dead, like, um, because they said in the movie that, Mothra was dying in the first place, so when she goes and fights Godzilla, she didn't have the strength to return to her to uh, the in to Mothra Island in the movie. So to Mothra Island, she didn't have the strength because she was dying in the first place. But she did put up one hell of a good fight though. And it's just like it just so funny. Mothra's death was like it's not as brutal as Godzilla raids again was. So. It was like Godzilla's, um, his second victory. So, yeah, if you look at how, like, how the moth or larvae are coming out of the egg here, it's like, they really, uh, wanted to make this thing look, go uh, look wet and disgusting and everything. And, yeah, I already mentioned that. I already mentioned this shot earlier. But when you look at it, it's like, they're, everything about Mothra and the larvae are just, they're just super adorable. Like, seriously, I know they're all puppets and they're giant monsters, but still, they really made them look super cute. They really made them look really cute, though. Um, yeah, I really ain't got, I already talked, uh, if you heard that, that was my, you know what, there you go. <laughs> I'm sorry, I like to make little joke. I like to make jokes sometimes. I'm kind of like, like, what was it? I'm like my buddy Alan, you know? I like to, like, you've probably, you've seen it in some of my videos. Oh, wait, never mind, I'm getting sidetracked. Sorry. Well, I'm going to finish that anyways. You've seen in my videos, Alan, you know, likes to joke around in all the vlog videos I do with him. Well, yeah. Anyways, back to this. Sorry, I keep getting sidetracked, folks, so much, but... Hey, you know what? It's sometimes good to talk about, you know, other stuff while doing the video. So you get a little chance to know who I am. Like, who is Leather Touchy? Anyways. Yeah, I already mentioned this shot. Uh, but I will admit, though, I do got to say one thing. Is that the effect when they, well, when they come out of the egg, it's like, that's another good effects pro. It really is. Like, this movie's just chock full of special effects pros. It really is. Like, I just, I got one more con to, I got one more con to mention, uh, when I, in this, um, in the, uh, in this effects review. I got one more con, and I don't know, I can't remember if it's coming up here, because when I did this video, I recorded the slideshow first, and then do my voice, so, yeah. So, how's everyone doing? So, how you do? Oh, and here we go. Here's the, uh, um, here's the, uh, and this picture is kind of small compared to the rest of them. I didn't think it was going to be that small, but here we go. Moth or larva biting Godzilla's tail. Um, the Godzilla moves really fast in this scene. Like, it's not Raids Again-ish. It's not Raids Again fast. It moves like King Kong versus Godzilla fast. But it's just so funny when you see him doing this uh, this new growling sound, and he's just waving his tail all over the place to shake the moth or larva off of him. It's a really funny, it's a actually a really funny scene. Like, truly. And it's just like, when he eventually shakes her off, he throws her. <laughs> he throws this moth or larva off, so... 
Yeah, there's not really much to... I mean, once again, the miniature sets look really good. And Godzilla Destroying... Actually, there's one effects pro that I didn't... That I actually did not mention. I'm sorry about that. But... I It looks super cool when... Um, what was it? When Godzilla destroys the city. It looks so... Um, it looks so cool. Like, reminiscent of the first film. Of three movies prior to this. It, when Godzilla destroys the city, it looks really good. Like, yeah, they have green screens in it, like always, but they have green screens in it, yeah, but the green screens work really well. And him destroying the city, it looks so cool to watch. It's like, it's very reminiscent of the first of three movies prior. So I'm sorry, folks, that I did not mention that. So, yeah. So that's another big effects pro that I really got to that I give this movie a plus for. But yeah, the mini, all the mini, well, in the background here in this shot, if you look off to the right, you can see, like, there's a map, there's another uh, map painting in the back. So, and yes, the sky is also a map painting as well. I, I, it's hard to, I know it's hard to, uh, oh my god, excuse me, that's the second time now, I'm sorry. But yeah, like, this movie is just, like I keep saying, this movie has so many pros in it. And uh, count how many cons that I mentioned. Here's a challenge for everybody who watches this. Count the cons. Count the cons. Because I know that I know how many cons I wrote down. But see if you can... Uh, what was it? Damn, count the cons. <laughs> like, seriously. And so, yeah. Uh, there's really not much to say about this about this shot in particular like like I said all I really wanted to say about it really yeah like I said it's just a really fun it's just a really funny little scene when God's when the Mothra when one of the larva bites Godzilla's tail and Godzilla sh starts shaking all over the place trying to g oh this effect shot here this is like oh, another really main highlight because the actor um, Haro Nakajima he there were a lot of accidents when he played in uh, a lot of the Toho monster films. There were some things that happened to him, and he is a tough... This guy's a tough dude. He really was. Rest in peace, Haro Nakajima. He passed away in 20... He passed away two years ago in 2017. But one, there's some... This is the first accident that I've noticed in a Godzilla movie here. If you notice, the head's on fire when explosives were detonated in front of the suit here and this is the first time the Godzilla suit has ever been on fire and it for an accident it looks really cool like the fire puts itself out as Godzilla start Godzilla gets up and he starts walking over to the left of the shot here and it's a really good effects highlight because it just proves how absolutely tough this not only behind the scenes wise, it's not only proves not only how tough the suit is, but how just badass Godzilla is in this movie. Like he his head's on his face and neck are on fire, but he keeps on walking. Like seriously. I I really do like that. And that and that's one thing is Nakajima, he played accidents have happened like this. Uh, that are a lot worse, and he plays it off like nothing. Like seriously, Nakajima was a tough. He was a tough dude when doing when doing this franchise and the other Toho monster films as well. Um, yeah, I just really do love this scene. This one little shot. It only happens for like maybe 30 seconds, and it's a really good 30 seconds. And the fire around him is like, once again, that was real fire next to him, like in the first two, like always. That fire was very real. It was right next, it was around the suit and everything. So Toho really was, they're, like I said, they're really improving as the franchise goes along. They're really trying, starting to get up, starting to get up there. Like, we're at the point in the franchise already where Godzilla started becoming, a, you know, a big icon. Like, first movie, well, first movie's first movie. Second movie was a big surprise. Then the third movie was like, oh my god, that's a, that's a surprise too. But here in the fourth film, 
we're at the point where Godzilla already is like he's becoming an icon. Like, oh, they're starting a, they're actually starting a franchise with him. So yeah, <laughs> but like I said, this this is a really cool. If for an accident, it's really it's a really awesome. It's a cool accident. Put it that way. Oh, this is my last special effects con. This is my last one. Now in the movie itself. Uh, one of the human characters, the corporate dickhead who deserved to die, actually. Um, if you remember the guy's name, it's not Komayama. It's uh, uh, the character named Shiro, um, Shiro Torahata, who Godzilla just kills him brutally by knocking his tail into the hotel that um, Torahata was, you know, was staying at. And you see all the rubble just falling on top of the guy and killing him. That's another special. That's another special effects pro that I got to give it for is um, the death scene, because it's like Godzilla slams his tail into the hotel and then all the rubble starts falling on top of the guy. Like the footage blends so well, but the this is the special effect. This is my last special effects con. Is when you look at the uh, giant dome, not really a dome. It's actually an incubator in the movie, as Turtahata says, and. There's a he says that the egg being a tourist attraction they need they wanted to make an incubator but he says we'll build one of glass um that doesn't look like glass <laughs> it truly does not look like glass I'm sorry um it really doesn't it looks like plastic. <laughs> it looks a lot like plastic. I'm sorry, but it really, it really does look a lot like plastic. Um, yeah, I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry, but it looks too much like plastic instead of glass. And when this building gets destroyed, when the incubator gets destroyed, they don't, they don't put in glass sound effects. They put in the, uh, the building crumbling sound effect so yeah that's the one part that I'm really confused about like um didn't they say that this thing was supposed to be made out of glass and then when it gets destroyed it don't even look like glass I mean it looks like it just looks like plastic I'm sorry um, that's my last effects con that I'm gonna mention now here's a challenge for all you guys count how many effects cons that I say in this movie count them I dare you I dare you all count them because this is the last one. This is my last one. But other than that, this movie, this that was only five. That's like maybe 97%. That's like maybe 3% compared to the other 97% of this movie, which is pro. All of special effects pros. Like the miniature sets that Godzilla walks through are really good. The, his atomic breath looks super, looks really cool. It looks like... Uh, King Kong vs. Godzilla. Here we have the green screens with him really far in the background. Uh, yeah, those... I think this is like my the last shot that I have presented here. And it's like, it looks really cool. Like, it goes to a close-up and it's a mini... and it's a little mini miniature set. But the miniature sets look... sex? Sorry. 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 Said that wrong. The miniature sets... I'm sorry. Miniature sets, they look really well put together. They look super well detailed. They're just... the Godzilla destroying stuff is so good. It is so well put together in this movie. I really... I enjoyed this movie. I really did. With the exception of those cons, that's all... That's it. Like, 97% of this movie is super well... Super well good. Another effects pro uh, that deals with the human characters again is... When uh, the two corporate dickheads, uh, what was it, um, Kumayama and Torahata, um, there's a point, well, I know I said I'm not talking about characterization in this movie, but the, I gotta talk about this because it leads up to this uh, one last effects, effects pro, where Kumayama, you end up hating Kumayama throughout this movie, but then at one point, you kind of like, kind of feel sorry for the guy, and he goes up to Torahata, and he I'm sorry, the dialogue between them is, is hilarious. It's really funny. And the the last effects pro that I'm going to mention is when Kumeyama punches Turahata in the face, he beats the crap out of him, he punches him in the face, and then you just see blood coming out of his, 
his nose and his mouth. It's it's super. I it's like oh my god, that actually looks legit. It it really looks like he socked him in the no in the face of like of, I think he does it like four times total, like four or five times, and it's like. It's a really, it's a really funny, it, not funny, but it's like a really, intri- like just a little short little fight scene, but the blood effects coming out of Torahata's nose are, it, that's a really, it looks really legit. I will give this movie that much. It actually looks legit. So it's like, when you, you can't just mention effects about the monsters, you gotta do the human characters as well, because sometimes the human characters do stuff that really just, uh, that's like, okay, they're worth mentioning. So, yeah, that, so, Mothra vs. Godzilla, it's like 97% of the film, uh, effects-wise, it's really good. It's a really well, uh, well done Godzilla movie, and I would recommend this one to any Godzilla fan, if you're willing to watch these movies in order like I am, and I just got done watching this movie, once again, I just got done watching it about, literally, actually, this one was, um, about 45 minutes ago I got done watching this movie. So if you're so, I would recommend this movie to any Godzilla film. Let me just get back to the poster. Uh, yeah, let me just get back to. The- poster here, because um, instead of ending with instead of ending this with my desktop with the shot of the T-Rex uh, from Jurassic World the game. I'm deciding I'm going to try to end these video and each episode of this series with the posters. So yeah, um, I would recommend this to any Godzilla fan. If you're willing to keep going like I am with these movies and do them in order from beginning to, ne- beginning to uh, the, the newest one. And I'm not saying the name because I'm not weird because we're not there yet in the franchise. We're only on the fourth movie. Uh, yeah, so, if you're willing to keep going, then you're, it's, Godzilla's getting good, he's getting better, he's really getting better here. So, I give, uh, Mothra vs. Godzilla, my score for this, I give this movie a solid 9 out of 10. Alright, so, uh, I, well, well, we end it with the T-Rex from Jurassic World Game anyways. Well, this is Tim W.